like animals? Ever wonder what kind of jobs are available working with animals? Let's find out. Let's see what it's like being a veterinarian for the state of Hawaii. My name is uh, Dr. Raquel Wong. I am a veterinary medical officer with the veterinary laboratory branch of the Animal Industry Division. I was raised here, wasn't exactly born here, but it's a typical story. My dad went off to college, met, a, met his wife, came and then moved back after they had the baby. So um, essentially most of my family is here. High school, St. Joseph High School from Kilo, um, then came to UH Manoa, um, graduated from there, and then went on to Colorado State Veterinary Medical School. I think a couple of things attracted me to veterinary medicine. And one of the main things, obviously, is I really liked working with animals. I think veterinary medicine has a lot of flexibility to it, meaning that you don't have to just be a practitioner. You, know, you don't have to be the neighborhood vet. You can do all, you know, all sorts of other things. You can, you know, it's, it's almost as varied as human medicine in terms of, you know, there's pharmacology, there's specialties, there's, you know, pathology and lab work and you know, pretty much anything, any interest that you have, you can pursue from that, that base. And that was really important. When I graduated from school, I was pretty much on the practitioner track, meaning that you, know, you start looking for practice jobs and um, to get training to kind of reinforce everything you've learned in school because they call it practice for a reason. The reason they call it practice is because everything you read in the books isn't exactly how you see it in real life. So and it, it takes practice to really um, be able to hone those skills to um, assess, the, assess the information you receive and all the different kinds of information you receive and then apply it to the situation. And that situation can change from you know, day to day, from you know, animal to animal, and even from you know, owner situation to owner situation. So every day it's such a big um, difference. You know, you get your routine puppy vaccinations to your emergency hit by car situation to your emergency surgery situation, you know, and it could all happen on the same day. And um, it's, it's a lot of commitment. Um, actually, I think the nature of government work is that it truly isn't as um, varied as private, you know, as private practice or the private sector. And actually, the main difference is just the type of animals I'm working with now. In practice, uh, I was a small animal practitioner, so we worked with dogs and cats, and you know, rabbits occasionally, um, sometimes birds, but it was mostly just dogs and cats. Whereas here, the veterinary laboratory supports the livestock disease control division. And by that nature, we, so now we see a lot of livestock. So now I'm seeing a lot of things like chickens and um, occasionally we'll see uh, pigs and occasionally we'll see uh, cattle. Usually we don't see horses, that's the only difference. But um, so just the nature of the animals has changed. And then from that, the types of diseases or things that we're looking for has kind of changed a little bit too. Because um, the problems that you find in livestock are a little bit different than you would see in practice. Um, and some of the duties that we perform, the veterinary laboratory primarily is a diagnostic laboratory that services the livestock disease control branch and the animal quarantine station for the rabies control branch, I should say. And in that capacity, my duties are to primarily we focus on diagnostic um, procedures in terms of animal diseases such as uh, necropsies and from your necropsy or yeah from your necropsy that will generate a series of tests that will occur in addition to the physical um, gross examination of your animal and then you might do things like parasitology or serology um, or clinical pathology to see what was wrong with that animal.
Besides your basic sciences, the interesting stuff were things like you take anatomy classes and the physiology classes, and those were very interesting because it's a lot of applied, applied knowledge, like or process knowledge, as opposed to just memorizing a bacteria and what it does and where it comes from. You know, you're actually learning how the heart works and how it works in the body, and how that heart affects the lungs, and then how the heart and the lungs might affect the kidney. So you know, you're starting to bring, um, starting to look at things as, as a whole. Even things that I didn't really like, like physics, <laughs> but actually that ends up playing a role because then you, physics and chemistry, because you need to understand how things relate to each other in terms of pressure, volume, and mass, how those things all relate. In the body, things are all in a, are all systems, right? You got your cardiovascular system, you got your pulmonary system, and so everything kind of works on pressure and volume. my personal situation, uh, math was not my most favorite subject, but I knew I needed math in order to understand the science or do the science. You do do a lot of calculations because, and it's more, but it's applied, again, it's applied math. It's like, you know, you know in, in order to understand how many, you know, how many mLs or cc's I need to draw up to sedate the big pit bull, I need to know the weight of the dog. I need to know the concentration of the drug and then the dosage of the drug. So you have to be able to calculate how many, you know, how much drug will sedate this dog without over sedating it or worse yet, under sedating it and getting hurt. So and that's 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 the most common type of math that you do. Be persistent and patient. That's the main thing and, and uh, because when you choose a career like veterinary medicine it's it's a journey it's and sometimes it's a it seems to be the longest journey you've ever taken <laughs> but there is an end and it and it there is an end and you'll look back once you've graduated from school and you realize how fast it actually went I mean just how fast you went and um, but it does require some patience and just kind of staying uh, focus on you know what you know where you want it to end up at the end because and it doesn't matter really how you know the journey can take many paths to get to the end but you just have to be patient and a little persistent yeah that's the thing <laughs> wow so many fields of work you can get into with a degree in veterinary medicine maybe one of them is a career for you